Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another LEGO Harry Potter review. Today I am really excited to be taking a look at set number 4768, the Durmstrang ship. This set includes 550 pieces retailing for $49.99 when it released in October of 2005. Now I've been waiting a really, really long time to get this set. I finally was able to get it at a price that I felt was reasonable. I paid $200 as this had the box, the instructions, and was complete with pretty much all of the pieces. That being said, I definitely recommend if you're looking for a Durmstrang ship set just to wait for the new one that LEGO's gonna be releasing this summer, June 1st, 2024, even featuring a version of the Beau Baton carriage alongside it. I'm really excited to build that one up and I'll do a quick comparison either separately or in that review. Talking about the box art, as you can tell as of me having to hold this thing down, it's not in the best condition. Some things I want to talk about is that we do get that 2005 Goblet of Fire box art with your logo, as well as that cartoonized version of Daniel Radcliffe Harry Potter. It does say that the boat does not float. Don't try putting this on water because it'll just sink. And another cool thing from the front, which we don't really see on anything other than 18 plus sets these days, is the measurements for this set. From the back side of the box, we have some looks at our interior as well as the measurements yet again for the ship, nice and big, and one of the alternate models that you can build using these pieces, which I always really enjoyed when LEGO did this back in the day. Straight to the point of what they're all about, creativity. As I bought this set used, I can't show the box contents other than the instructions that mimic the front of the box. From the back side, you get an advertisement for some of the other minifigures or parts of those other Goblet of Fire sets. You get the Horntail, which I will have a video out for that sometime in the future. From the pages to follow, we have some sign-up sheets for LEGO Club. A better advertisement showcasing those other sets in the Wave, which as I said, I currently only own this one and the Horntail set, which I'll eventually end up reviewing. Would like to get these two sometime in the future. Hopefully I find them someday. And then we have that that weird alternate build yet again here, which I just think is so hilarious. Finishing up with the instructions. Back in the day, LEGO used to show all of the play features nice and big in their instructions. They don't really do that anymore. I don't know why. To begin our minifigure selection, we have Headmaster of Durmstrang, Igor Kakarov, for the very first time ever in LEGO form. We get a brand new torso print, which you'd also end up seeing in Victor Crumb in this set, as well as that Mongolian fur hat, which I think is a really cool piece to get in this set, first introduced within the LEGO Adventurers theme. You can spin them right around and see no back printing, no double-sided facial expression as this was released back in 2005. Definitely a figure that LEGO is going to vastly improve on within the 2024 set. Just like Konkarov, Victor Crumb features the same exact torso print and hat design, though we get a special facial expression, which I believe would also be used on his figure within the Lake Task set. Definitely like this facial expression a lot better than what they had came out with within the 2019 wave. I definitely think Victor Crumb is on track of being a really great figure, especially how you see him within the new 2024 set. Before we move on to the final build, I did also want to mention that there was a variant of this set released with the same exact set number as a Target exclusive that featured additional minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, and Dumbledore. I'm not exactly sure if that set's harder or about the same level of difficulty to get your hands on, though really the only thing exclusive about that set is going to be the box art, otherwise everything, the contents inside is going to be the same other than getting those other minifigures within the set. The Durmstrang ship is yet another very tall build from the Lego Harry Potter theme. I think it looks extraordinary. I definitely am so happy that I was able to add this to my collection. It just looks, it looks really great for the time. Though, I, as far as building techniques go, it's not very sturdy, which is probably one of my biggest complaints about this thing, aside from the flags, which as much as I love getting those exclusive flag pieces on this build, it's just such a shame that the way that they're connected over time, they're just going to start 
falling and it's not gonna look as pretty which you may even see over the course of this video i've had this set built for a few days and i've noticed that the flags have just been falling down slowly but surely down those poles despite the fact that lego says that the boat does not float we do get two rather sizable bottom pieces for this boat build which I believe have remained exclusive to this set. I'm not gonna show how they separate. I may have a picture that I can show on screen. I don't remember exactly, but this comes out in two pieces. You have another exclusive mold from the very front of this ship, which I think it's really crazy to see how many larger pieces are being used in this set compared to nowadays in 2024. I believe we're going to see a lot more smaller pieces being used on the newer set to accomplish more finer details. Starting with the front and the deck of the build and then working our way up to the cabins over there. First things first, we have a nice anchor, which is in such a perfect spot. I really like that they have an area where you can hang it up. But if you want to have it fall down, you can just easily lift it off and throw it off to the side. You can see that the chain is connected right there in the middle, and there's not so much chain, so it makes it real nice and easy to tuck this thing up. You'll also see our first mast, where we have some folded up sails, which is really interesting to see that we have these folded up sail designs instead of actually full-blown sails on this vehicle like we're going to be seeing in the 2024 set. As you move up the design, you'll see that we have a little barrel as a spot where you can place a minifigure to look upon the shore. This is where I can also mention again just how those flag pieces are connected. It's not very strong. They're going to be very flimsy and fly around wherever. From the middle of the boat, you'll see that we have this graded area, which also has two of these pieces that allows you to lift it up and see that we have a spot underneath the boat where you can put where whatever you want, I guess. I don't know what you're exactly supposed to be putting in there. It's another pocket of air as if this thing was meant to float on water, though Lego specifically says that it does not. From the other side, you'll notice that we have a plank, even though this isn't exactly a pirate ship, but still an interesting inclusion in a set like this. You can also just pretend that this is how we have Victor Crumb training for the lake task, how he's diving into the cold winter water like described in the books. Leading up the middle mast, we have some rigging that you can have your characters climb up to get to the top, where we have yet another folded up sail, as well as another barrel as a spot where you can place a minifigure. And here we have another one of those flag designs, the same one that you're going to see another time down the road. From both sides of the ship, you'll also find some really cool details, including a Durmstrang shield design, which I think is really cool. Hopefully we can get that in focus. You get two of those in here. And you also have this other shield design, which is something that we saw within the LEGO Castle theme back in the day, which is a little inaccurate compared to what we're actually going to be seeing in the new set, which it's really crazy to see that they are going all out with those particular details, even if they aren't going to be printed. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But some other pieces that I do have to highlight in this situation include these golden studs, which you're going to see two on this side and two on the other side. Such a cool piece to get. Also used as the golden snitch in Quidditch back in 2002. As I said before, same design from the other side. And that brings us to the main cabins where you can actually enter freely. You have some nice wide open areas to get to the bottom floor. Though the top one is actually fully enclosed, which we can actually open and separate all of these different compartments. As an old set, it's going to be a little hard to take apart and very, very minimum stud connections. We only get the two stud connections from the top of this spot in order to connect these pieces here. And this is even connected using some Technic connections. And then we only get some jumper plates when it comes to this section, which as you can see, one of them even just was left on the bottom of this other build. Looking inside this first section, you can see that we have a little table with a lamp as well as a letter print. You can sit your minifigure down on those little benches there. 
They get some clip piece connections off to the side, which feature accessories. This black stick, I believe, is supposed to be Kakarov's wand. And then, of course, we get a broomstick for Victor Krum as a Quidditch player. From the back, nothing really too exciting, just a plain old wall there. Building up the next section, we're going to plop this one right on top of the studs, make a little bit of noise. You can see that we get the steering wheel, as well as, I guess, a little boost for Kakarov so he can actually look at his map, maybe, which I think is really hilarious that they had to include something from this stand on, but there you go. Steering wheel is connected using a Technic connection so you can spin it and turn it any way you want. Map print we have seen in other sets before. Additionally, you'll see some clip piece connections, one that has nothing, and then another one over here, which has one of those stargazing type tools for when you're sailing a ship. Placing this next section on, you just slide it into place using those Technic connections. And that gives you that jumper plate spot in order to place the last piece, which we're going to look at right now. Finishing up with this last section, you can open up the doors to reveal the very, very, very cramped interior, which if you don't like that, you can easily just split this apart. But before you do that, you do have to remove the mast at the top. I think this is probably the most sturdy design as far as how they connect these things. But now that that's removed, we can open up the interior, you can see that we use those hinge bricks right at the back. Lots and lots of holes spread throughout the set. Some other little details, we get a little magnifying glass, we get a red book which doesn't have anything exciting in it. We get this blue cup on that shelf. We have what I believe is maybe some sort of like magic burner here. We have sort of like a flame on a wooden table, which is definitely not safe for a ship like this. We get a bat, we have an ink and quill, and then what I believe is supposed to maybe represent the Goblet of Fire, even though that's not really supposed to be in here. That's a nice gesture though. And we also get this printed scroll, which is a really nice piece to get in a set like this. Very, very cramped interior. You open those doors, you can't really even fit inside that room. I do like that they give you that option to make this open up so you can have a little bit more space. Though I definitely think that if they wanted to give us more room in here, they just should have made the ship a little bit bigger. But at the end of the day, I definitely think that my favorite part as far as the interiors go has to be underneath this top level. Finishing off this build, we have four more of those chrome gold pieces that you can see my reflection in, which is really crazy crazy to get these in this set. I'm not exactly sure how many other sets these would come in, but it's just really cool to get four of those and those four golden studs in this set. Something that you don't see from LEGO anymore, purely because I think it caused issues as far as the paint peeling off or something like that. It's a real big shame. I do miss those chrome lightsabers. And as I said before, you can easily plop right back on the mast and make sure that you have your Technic axle running through to make sure that it has a nice sturdy connection. And leading up this, we'll have a very similar design where we have that folded up sail and another one of those flags there, which is falling down a little bit. Even though you can slide it back up, it'll probably just start falling down over time. So overall for $50 back in the day, even if you got this with those extra minifigures, I think that this would have been a really great set to get for the time. It's really crazy to think that this would be the only set with Igor Kokorov until 2024. Victor Crumb we'd see return in 2019, though still we wouldn't see him in his school outfit till this year 2024. As far as the build goes, I think it looks amazing from the outside some outdated building techniques, a few unsturdy designs, more so bothered by the fact that when you remove things, you can remove pieces that you're not supposed to. But still, as far as a set that I bought for display, I'm really happy to add this one to my collection, and I can't wait to get the others from this wave and just display them all together. I just think they'd look great. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so don't upload a new video. So yeah, that's for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!